Okay. Hello, dear friends and guests. Hello, dear friends and guests gathered here from all over the world. Hello and welcome. My name is Paris Moon, your MC for today's event. Now, we are happy to welcome to WFWP Perspective GMZ as a future peace zone in Korean Peninsula. This year, the Republic of Korea commemorates the 71st anniversary of the Korean War. Many steps have been taken by civil society organization to reunify and bring peace to the two countries. WFWPI has invited well-known scholars who have been continuously working to promote positive changes and share their works related to Korean DMZ and take an active role in leading efforts for reconciliation and conflict transformation. This webinar, I would like to introduce our moderator, Madame Gloria Dantes. She was born in Buenos Aires, Argentina. She is the sub-regional director of the Women's Federation for World Peace in South America. As a person concerned about peace and harmony in the world, she has organized events of different organizations such as CAUSA, and Aura in Brazil, Uruguay, and Argentina. Let's welcome Madame Gloria Dantes. Um, uh, can you allow me to uh, open my video, please? Okay, thank you. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome. My name is Gloria Dantas, your moderator for today's webinar. Before beginning the webinar, there are a few announcements. Firstly, we have a translation from English to Korean, Japanese, Spanish, French, Russian, Chinese, and Thai. And if you have a question throughout the webinar, feel free to add it into Q&A. You are welcome to chat in the chats among yourselves as much as you want, but just be aware we won't be checking the chats. We will only check Q&A and we'll try to get through all of your questions. But there are a lot of people in this webinar, so apologies in advance. If we don't get to your question, you can always email us after the webinar. We are happy to welcome you to WFWP webinar on DMZ as future peace zone in Korean Peninsula, hosted by the Women's Federation for World Peace International. WFWP was founded in 1992 and is an NGO in general consultative status with United Nations Economic and Social Council and is active in more than 120 nations throughout the world. Now, I am happy to officially start our webinar with special entertainment from Ms. Florencia Dantas. She is 19 years old, she loves singing, and has performed in events in Argentina and other countries in Latin America. Ms. Dantas will perform the song, Send It On. Please, Enjoy her powerful performance.
Thank you, Ms. Dantas. Now, we want to give our panelists an opportunity to share with us their thoughts on the theme, DMZ as future peace zone in Korean Peninsula. Please join me in welcoming our first guest speaker, Dr. John Jun Woo. Dr. Woo, a Korean forester and educator, received his PhD in forest management from the Freiburg University in Germany. He has published a number of study textbooks and journals in forest management policy and the revitalization of the Korean Peninsula. He was awarded the DMZ Priest Prize, the Society Service Grant Prize, Educational Sector, for educational excellence through his contribution to the realization of green environment education. Currently, he serves as Professor Emeritus at Kangwon National University in South Korea. Let's welcome him with an applause. Welcome, Dr. Yu. Thank you very much for your uh, nice presentation. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Professor Jong Chun Woo, and I am honored and grateful to be giving this special lecture with the invitation of the Women's Federation for World Peace. In Korea, June is the month of veterans service, and this year is the 71st anniversary of the outbreak of the Korean War. Today, I'll be talking about the peaceful utilization of the DMG with a focus on the forest ecological environment. As you can see on the slide, I will be going through my presentation in the following order. Introduction, first in uh, first of South Korea, uh, first of North Korea, uh, peaceful utilization of the DMG efforts to integrate forest ecology of the Korean Peninsula. My name is Jong Chun Woo. Thanks, Madam Julia Moon, for inviting me to this special webinar. Thank you, Madam uh, Gantas, for your wonderful introduction about me. Today, I will be talk about DMG past and future. As you all know, there was an inter-Korean summit on April 27, 2018, and the first joint interest of the uh, two leaders was to plant the trees. When the two leaders of the two Koreas uh, met at Panmunjom on June 30th, 2019 with the President Trump of the United States, they discussed the peace on the Korean Peninsula. Since then, the issue of a peaceful inter-Korean unification has been discussed in depth on the Korean Peninsula. The second topic is uh, introduction of Korean forest. The Korean Peninsula is located at the heart of the uh, Northwestern Pacific, sharing the border uh, with uh, China and Russia to the north and lying near Japan. It extends about 960 kilometers southward and its width is uh, about 170 kilometers from east to west. It is surrounded by three, ocean, uh, three oceans and nearly 70% of its terrain is mostly mountainous. So terrestrial and the marine uh, ecosystems have a variety of species with high biodiversity. The Korean Peninsula encompasses 22 million hectares. This is 45% of which makes up the Republic of Korea. About 20% of the total land area in the Republic of Korea is used for agriculture, mm -hmm. while forests cover 63%. The Korean Peninsula lies in the east of the distinct uh, seasonal temperature and the precipitation. In the independence era, post the Japanese rule, uh, the Korean forest policies focused on restoring the uh, devastated forest, several medium and long term forest plans, three year, five year, and 10 year plans were established. 
The first 10-year national greening plan's objective was to accomplish complete revegetation of the denoted forest in 10 years from 1973 to 1982. But the plan was completed in 1978, four years ahead of its schedule with overwhelming enthusiasm and uh, cooperation between the government and the village people. The second plan from 1979 to 1987 is connected with the first plan in respect of continuing to extend uh, afforestation. However, major policies in this plan uh, based on the accomplishments during the first plan was uh, slightly changed. Major policy was the establishment of large-scale commercial plantation instead of the rehabilitation of denoted forest by the nationwide uh, reforestation campaign. Success factors in Korean forest reforestation are as follows. First, strong and effective leadership. Second, integrated planning and implementation. Third, participation of stakeholders. Lastly, uh, coordination of, with the related policies. You can see more detailed information of the contents on the slide. So the topic is uh, forest of North Korea. In particular, uh, the area of forest devastation in North Korea has been on the rise, but satellite photo readings in 2018 uh, show that it has decreased significantly. The area of devastation was 2.84 million hectares in 2008. Satellite image analysis in 2018 shows 2.62 million hectares of devastation, or 28% 20, uh, of the total forest. Forest devastation area did decrease 7.7%. The most heavily deforestation area are Nampo City with 74%, followed by Gaesong City with 60%, uh, Hwangye Namdo with 50%, and Pyeonghan Namdo with 47%. These are the causes for North Korea's devastation. For the reclam uh, reclamation, fired harvesting, excessive deforestation, natural digester damages. Uh, for example, torrential rains, forest fire, forested pest. As you can see in the picture, there are only a few trees in the mountains of the North Korea. The first topic is a peaceful utilization of the DMZ. The length from uh, Gosong County on the east coast to the uh, mouth of the Imjin River is about 239 kilometers. This is about uh, 148 miles long and has an area of about 903.8 uh, square kilometer. Currently, the width of the DMZ appears to be The length from Gosong County on the east coast to the mouth of the Imjin River is about 239 kilometers long and has an area of about 903.8 square kilometers. Currently, the width of the DMG appears to be at least about 750 meters, depending on the region due to the military interest of both sides. Around 4,600 houses in 427 villages in the DMZ were banished. As you can see in the pictures, 2,388 houses in Gangwon province and 2,238 houses in Gyeonggi province existed at around 1910. In 1979, United States forces in Korea Greg Bowen 
uh, his archaeology major was uh, found in Hantan River near the DMZ. The Ashilian Thai uh, fist X fist is the Momius doctrine. This is a theory of a backward civilization in Asia, was found only in Africa and Europe and was placed in front of the existing theory after discovery. The ruins of the capital city of Tebongguk, Cholwonsong, was found and Kungye established Tebongguk and used it as a capital city. That is why the DMZ in Gangwon province is the site of a long history and the center of it on Korean Peninsula. There are many modern cultural heritages and ecological environment in the DMZ area. However, access was restricted to civilian, uh, civilians for 68 years. Therefore, these regions are the world's best naturally restored and the clean ecological area. The eastern front is the center of Baekdu Degan, habitats of endangered animals and plants, such as 800 cranes, natural uh, monument mosk deer, and the ghost were confirmed. For the DMG conservation and utilization, uh, a World Peace Park will be created in the demilitarized zone together with the United Nations related countries. DMG is the only place in the world that shows the natural transitional process of ecology without human interference for Excuse me for interrupting you, Dr. Wu, but we can only see the first slide. There seems to be something wrong with the presentation. The DMG needs to change its role so that it can contribute long term to world peace. DMG is also a global ecological peace center. So if you acquire the three UNESCO certification, BR, uh, Vice. Biosphere Reserve, uh, GGP, UNESCO Global Geopark, World Heritage. This is UNESCO certification triple crown. At the moment, only BR and GGP are registered for, uh, registered for it to become a World Heritage Site. North Korean cooperation is absolutely needed. Now I would like to speak about uh, strategies for integrating the DMG forest ecological environment. First is to promote the DMG ecologically uh, from the land of death of, uh, to the land of life. In DMG, the forest nursery will be reclaimed so that we can offer inter-Korean border with the needed supply of seedlings. An opportunity for the central part of the Korean peninsula could be transforming it into a forest and the land of life. Second is to promote the forest of life through cooperation. For 20 years from 1974 to 1994, Germany helped the Korean forest management with the technical cooperation. A catalyst to further advancement of forest management could be prepared on the Korean peninsula through inter-Korean forest cooperation. Third, to establish an arboretum and the DMG World Peace Park. It would be a great idea to establish an arboretum mm -hmm. uh, for the Korean world, participating countries in the, in the shape of Korean Peninsula and for the victims of the, uh, each country that participated in the Korean War. Lastly, I want to explain about the various experts uh, efforts to iterate forest ecology on the Korean Peninsula. On April 9th of 2014, I established the Korean Inter-Korean Forest Cooperation Research Center at the Gangwon National University to help North Korea with this matter. I have visited the Yanbian University of Science and Technology of China to present my paper at the International Symposium and also to discuss the uh, reforestation of North Korea with uh, many professors. In early April of 2015, I have visited the Kaesang Industrial Zone of North Korea to plant the trees for commemorating the 70th anniversary of Korea's liberation. At the same time, I have sent 3,000 seedlings to the Gaesan industrial region of North Korea. And on October 30, 2015, 
I have delivered the fertilizer to the Gaesong Industrial Zone of North Korea. These efforts were recognized so on December 10th, 2015. I was award, awarded the, the DNG Peace Prize from Gangwon Province and Gangwon Newspaper. On May two, 2015, I signed an MOU document with the Kim Il-sung University of North Korea and the Yanbian University of China to implement the international core research project. The slide shows the signed MOU document. I visited Mother Moon, Dr. Hak Han Moon, to explain my research project and NGO activities for helping sustainable development in North Korea. I presented the university textbook. This is a new forest management that I wrote with 12 other uh, professors. This textbook was sent to Kim Il-sung University of North Korea through President Dr. Seliger of Hans Scheider Foundation, which is a German organization for helping North Korea. Mother Moon was very pleased and overjoyed to hear that we practice the sustainable development and environmental protection, which Mother Moon sought that to us. Mother Moon graciously signed this textbook for my next, pre, uh, next pro project. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Dr. Wu, for your valuable information. Uh, we will have the Q&A session after the presentation of all panelists. Please send all your questions to the Q&A chat box. Uh, let's welcome our next speaker, Dr. Sun Ho Lee. Dr. Lee is president of the DMZ Forum Incorporated, a US registered nonprofit organization that aims to transform the Korean DMZ into an international peace zone. He was adjunct professor and senior researcher at the New York University and graduated from the School of Public Service. He also worked for the New York State Legislative Commission on critical transportation choices. He holds a PhD degree in political science from the State University of New York at Albany. Uh, thanks for being with us, Dr. Lee. Thank you, Madam, for the kind introduction. And I'm, I'm very, very honored to join this very important webinar. So to save time, I'm going to my share screen. As you see, uh, today's topic is how to make North Korea agree to transform the Korean DMZ into a peace zone. <clears throat> As you may know, the Korean DMZ was created after the Korean War in 1953 along the line of military demarcation line and uh, is a four kilometers by 250 kilometers. But there is a dark reality of the Korean DMZ. Half of the DMZ is occupied by North Korea. And unlike its name, DMZ, Demilitarized Zone, this northern half is the most heavily militarized zone with underground thousands of artillery and armaments. They can make the uh, Seoul metro area with more than 25 million people, a sea of fire, as they said, within minutes, even without missiles. So this is a dark reality. So we need to go beyond the, uh, We need to go beyond the wishful thinking that without understanding the nature of North Korea and North Koreans and the Korean War, our thinking, our idea for peace zone will remain only as a wishful thinking. And also there should be no more wishful thinking that North Korean regime will be collapsed by the external 
maximum pressures. Actually, the US policy toward North Korea failed for the last 30 years since 1991. North Koreans, maybe the people who moved to North Korea never imagined they will be called as North Koreans. So most people who moved to North Korea at the end of Japanese colonialism in 1945 had been extremely defiant against the Japanese colonial rule and the joint military clandestine independence movement rather than diplomatic, educational, and, and cultural. So some Korean officers still remember us as heroes as they fight together with Chinese people and they save the leaders and soldiers of Chinese at the critical battles. So when Japan succumbed to the Allied forces in 1945, most of these Korean officers and soldiers went to North Korea. And these Korean officers and soldiers came back later in 1948 to China as the official North Korean army to help the Chinese People's Liberation Army in fighting against the Kuomintang army. So at this time, the communist North Korea vividly experienced how the entire China fell into the hands of Chinese communists. <clears throat> so at the time, North Koreans mistakenly perceived South Koreans under the US supervision as Koreans under Japanese colonialism. So North Korea simply viewed the US as another imperialist force replacing Japan. So North Korean people and their descendants are innately defiant against any type of external intervention and law. So, sorry. So they are willing to fight to the test to expel any foreign aggression. So they attacked South Korea in 1950, but their view on the Korean War is astonishing. It's obvious that they launched the Korean War in June, on June 25, 1950, but North Korea argues the war had already begun by the US when it occupied the southern half of the Korean peninsula in 1945. And this Korean North Korean response in 1950 to the war was intended to liberate South Korean people from the US imperialism and blame the US for all the human loss and devastation. So there are two contrasting views on the DMZ. North Korea views the DMZ as a symbol of the US imperialism, national division and national disgrace. So it must be removed. On the other hand, South Korea perceived DMZ as a symbol of peace memorial, natural treasure, and cultural heritage. So it must be preserved. We need to combine them. So the consequences of DMZ. The Korean War ended with the armistice, that is ceasefire, not a peace treaty between the military forces, between North Korea along with the China and the Soviet Union, there's the communist bloc, and then the other side is South Korea, along with the United States, and dozens of other UN member states. So though the Cold War was incepted at the end of the World War II, the Korean DMZ became an actual trial of Cold War. It's a birth of Cold War. There's a lot of Cold War politics. Two half Olympics in Los Angeles and Moscow. And North Korea was very active during the Cold War until the Summer Olympics of Seoul, where 160 countries from all around the world joined. 
So North Korea put enormous effort to persuade its long-standing allies, Soviet Union and China, not to participate in the Seoul Olympics, but failed. At this time, the collapse of the Soviet Union already loomed and the end of the Cold War began to be felt. So before long, North Korea was painfully betrayed by Soviet Union and China when they established formal diplomatic ties with South Korea. So with this betrayal and the demise of Cold War in 1991, North Korea felt deeply insecure in the international context and firmly decided to develop nuclear weapons. So in reflection, when Russia and China from the communist bloc set up formal diplomatic ties with both North and South Koreas, the US from Western bloc should have done so with both North Koreas and South Korea. So it'll help dissuade North Korea's attempts to develop nuclear weapons. So however, because of overflowing pride and confidence from winning the Cold War, in early 1990s, the US disregarded China's potential to become a world power and ignored the overall political animosities between China and North Korea. So the Biden administration tried to contain the Chinese influence. So there's not much we can do to get China back to middle power status. But we can use North Korea. China is really its power over both Koreas, so should the United States. So by establishing diplomatic ties with both Koreas, the US can achieve its best strategic interest in Asia. And again, the pride and confidence in early 1990s U.S. ignored the significant power of Chucha ideology, its cultural and historical roots for the survival of North Korean regime. U.S. did not understand the North Korean people and underestimated the North Korean capabilities to develop nuclear weapons and took their maximum pressure strategy. Chucha ideology Kim Il-sung was very shrewd in rallying North Korean people under the flag of Chuche independence. And he was so effective in purging his Kim Il-sung's political rivals within his party and very helpful in maintaining North Korean regime until now, despite unbearable economic hardships. Why? North Korean people and their descendants innately freedom fighters they are very, very independent and defiant against any external intervention. So they are willing to fight. So that's why Chu Chaider is very well received in every life of North Korean people. Let's live in our own way. Historically, North Korea is very sovereign. And uh, the neighboring countries invaded North Korean peasants more than 900 times. Naturally, North Koreans are inherently very skeptical of neighboring states. So they are more willing to shake hands with faraway countries like United States. So most Korean, North Koreans I know very much able to know about all Americans. So, North Korea develop nuclear weapons, they will not give up the nuclear weapons, no matter what. So it will not collapse, no matter how hard they're gonna be hardships. For sure the regime will not simply succumb to any types of maximum pressures, including preemptive nuclear strikes. So there is ironic missteps for the US. The US ignorance of Chucha ideology and thanks to maximum pressures, North Korean regime has been able to survive for the last 30 years. North Korean people, as you know, and examined 
most independent, industrious, loyal people, not to mention smart and intelligent. They are innately freedom seekers from any types of foreign aggression. So if there's no external foreign threats, the North Korean people will naturally achieve their internal domestic freedom by their own means. But ironically, the maximum pressures done by US have deprived North Korean people of such an opportunity and unfortunately strengthened the position of Kim Il-sung's Chuchi ideology by North Korean regime. So now how to make North Korea to agree to peace term? The complete denuclearization of North Korean nuclear weapons should be swapped by complete normalization of US Korea North Korea relations. North Korea obviously developed its nuclear weapons because of very real US military threats. So North Korean nuclear weapons will become useless when there's no threat from US. They will not use it to attack China and Russia. They will not use it to attack Japan or South Korea because they will get an immediate and imaginable retaliation from the US. So the normalization of the US-North Korea relationship is the key. Also, US should give economic incentives to North Korea in return for designating entire Korean DMs in peace zone because North Korea will not simply give up its territory of DMs without economic incentives. Also, DMG zone should be under UN jurisdiction to decrease the US influence. And also DMG zone under UN jurisdiction should be expired in 70 years. And the peace zone and the UN jurisdiction for the next 70 years will play a significant role for collective security and trust and reconciliation. Thirdly, most important, US, US military presence in South Korea must remain as it has been in Germany, even after German unification. The US South Korea should make sure of it. Although North Korea already agreed to the idea of US military presence in multiple times in previous talks, North Korea has maintained huge stockpiles of military. So although it's very unlikely North Korea makes any preemptive attacks on neighboring countries, including the US, but South Korea is an exception. North Korea has always maintained the goal of liberating South Korean people from the US imperialism. South Korea should never be deceived by the North Korean lip service of changing the position. Until the North Korean misconception of South Korean liberation stemmed from Chucha ideology completely and permanently raised a maximum military preparedness South Korea is necessary. Most important in this process, the strong guardism within DPRK, North Korea is needed to replace North Korean idea of Oboi Suryang, parent, parent to Supreme Command. So plans for the DH for future peace job. We can establish fifth UN secretary within the DMG for climate change and biodiversity protection. There are four UN secretaries, second, Geneva, third, Vienna, fourth, Nairobi. The fifth in the Korean DMG for climate change and nature protection seems to be quite reasonable as the world is facing horrendous natural disasters. And the DMG is considered a biodiversity bonanza, an extent to paradise for rare plants and endangered animals. Most important, change that has remained a virtual no man's land since 1953 gives real time opportunities to learn and observe and study how nature regenerates and restores itself after total devastation by humans like this. So in addition, DMZ ecosystem help reduce carbon emissions and we can use carbon credit programs. And also these industry have a stake in preserving primitive ecology and reduce carbon reduction. 
and Mount Gangnam in North Korea, and the DMs in the middle, and the Mount Sorak in South Korea can be combined as a UNESCO bicycle reserve. The Korean DMs created in between the two Koreas at the Korea can be reborn as a DMs zone, peace zone, when you persuade the North Korea's disgust and will play a pivotal role in rejuvenating peace and unification of the entire Korea Peninsula. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Lee, for your detailed explanation of the history of North and South Korea and the DMZ. Thank you very much. Our, let's welcome now our third speaker, Dr. Chu Fan Wu. Dr. Wu has been working as a postdoctoral research fellow and adjunct assistant professor at the Peace Research Center of National Cuomo University in Taiwan after getting a PhD in sociology at Seoul National University in South Korea. Her doctoral thesis explored how Kinmen Island repositions in cross-strait relations and play a role in maintaining exchanges from the perspective of cross-strait tourism exchanges. Due to the experience of studying in South Korea, she's very concerned about the development of the border areas in South Korea and the role that border area can play under the exchange between South and North Korea. She hopes to share the experience of Kimmen with South Korea and even the whole world so as to promote peace in East Asia. Please, Dr. Wu, we, can, we are ready to listen to your presentation. Uh, uh,首先谢谢大会的邀请那坐飞机需要一个小时的时间那这个是同安渡头以前所有的金门人到东南亚工作
呃，就这样，金门跟厦门的往来一日之间突然中断，大约有三千多位金门人被迫留在中国大陆，所以有人用“早上开门，晚上关门”来形容金门人跟厦门人的不知所措。然后这张照片呢，是一九四九年之后被留在中国的金门人。好，从此以后呢，两岸中国跟台湾就正式进入冷战时期。好，一九四九年国民党撤退到台湾之后，在金门发生了第一场登陆战。由于国军取得了久违的胜利，奠定了金门在两岸战争的重呃战略重要性。为了防止共军再次登陆，冷战时期的金门岛跟韩国的 d m z 或者是、呃、德国的柏林围墙一样，海岸线都布满了反登陆装、以地雷以及哨所，形成海岸线的三重防御机制。好，第一道防御机制是将。火车的铁轨切断之后，设置在海岸线上，防止敌军登陆。在韩国的白林岛也有一样的设施，称为龙池。然后，因为金门跟中国的距离非常的近，所以常常会有共军游泳过来，金门人都叫他们水鬼。所以，第二道防御机制是地雷。是预防水鬼上岸。图片上的红线都是雷区，几乎没有一个海岸是没有地雷的。一直到二零一三年，金门群岛的地雷才宣布排除完毕。呃，这张是金门画家李如清所画的绘本中所呈现的金门冷战海岸景观。啊，黄色的花朵被金门人称为地雷花，因为这种花朵多长在海边，而且地雷也经常是埋在海边。这跟大会提供的其中一个背景非常类似，所以我今天选择了这个背景。然后第三道防御机制是海边的哨所。国民党军队进驻金门之后，为了构筑防御设施，将民宅的大门，甚至坟墓的石牌都拆掉，去盖防御碉堡，使得金门人非常的愤怒与难过。呃，冷战时期，金门人不管是在岛内移动，或者是要去台湾本岛，都得要有通行证，而且实行宵禁，这是预防有共军上岸，或者是金门人从事间谍行动。任何可以协助游泳的物品都不能持有，例如篮球，因为呃，国军怕金门人叛逃到中国去。接下来是两岸和平交流时期。一九七九年元旦，中国发表了告同台湾告台湾同胞书之后，宣布停止对金马地区的炮火，并且建议两岸尽早实行通航、通邮、通商的和平交流。呃，于是，一九四九年，跟随蒋介石到台湾的大陆籍老兵们开始要求回中国大陆探亲。这张照片是一九八七年母亲节的时候，大陆籍老兵在街上举牌诉求，想要回家看回家乡看妈妈的心情。一九八七年七月十五日，呃。台湾本岛宣布解除戒严，并且基于人道主义，十一月台湾政府开放让民众赴中国探亲。这是一九八八年大陆籍老兵们申请探亲的场面。时隔五年之后的一九九二年，金门岛也解除了戒严。呃，并于二零零一年与中国的厦门岛实行小三通，开启了两岸和平交流的试验期。金门也从战争的最前线转型为和平交流的最前线
。这张照片是二零零一年一月二日开往厦门的金门客轮。两岸的离散家族也终于能够利用合法以及快速的管道在金门相逢。小三通开启之后，金门到厦门坐船只要三十分钟，因此金门的金门与厦门的一日生活圈又重新开启了。自从二零零一年开放小三通到现在，造访金门的中国观光客人数不断增加，所以金门也被赋予了“和平桥梁”的称号。随着两岸停火，金门以往的防御设施现在大部分规划为观光景点，呃，供两岸的人民参观。呃，这是一九四九年发生在金门的第一场登陆战时，被共军占领作为指挥所的建筑。除了保留当时激战的枪孔之外，建筑的一部分如今是作为民宿之用。这张照片是冷战时期，为了避开中国的炮击，给补给物资的军艇开凿的坑道，现在成为中国观光客最喜欢的景点，并且在每年的十月都会在坑道里举行音乐会。另外，在一九五八年，让金门岛一夜成名的就是著名的八二三炮战。呃，当时中国在四十四天期间对金门岛呃发射了四十七万发的炮弹，之后又发动了为期二十年的宣传弹攻击。金门人现在将炮弹收集起来做成刀，一颗炮弹可以做四十到六十把的刀，然后成为就是两岸观光客喜爱的伴手礼。商家还开玩笑说这是毛泽东送我们的礼物。那金门人还用自己生产的高粱酒为基底，卖起了毛泽东奶茶。这个以前天天担心共军会登陆的地点，现在变成观光客拍照的热点，并且每年会举办金门与厦门的长泳活动，借由体育赛事展现曾经肃杀的海域，现在已经安全了。呃，除了络绎不绝来金门的中国观光客以外，金门与厦门在文化、教育等方面都有很频繁的交流，甚至金门于二零一八年八月终于完成从中国通水的工程，小两岸正式迈入通水、通电、通桥、新三通的阶段。好，最后我以这张照片作为结尾。这是金门闹区的一条街，社区居民将街道的一边挂上台湾国旗，一边挂上中国国旗，凸显了尽管在中国与台湾政府的政治角力下，金门如今称职的扮演着缓冲两岸关系、呃，两岸紧张关系的和平岛角色。希望有一天在北韩的南北韩的边境地区，也能看到如此和平的景。景色。以上是我的报告，谢谢大家。Uh, thanks for the valuable information about Kinmen Island.、Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Yu, Dr. Wu. Sorry.、Uh, our uh, so thank you.、Uh, we will have the Q and A session after the panelists' presentation. So you, we invite you to write your questions in the chat box.、Um, so let's welcome our last panelist speaker, Madame Hiroko Oizumi. Madame Oizumi is a counselor at Mitsui Sumitomo Insurance Welfare Foundation. She was a member of the Parliament of Japan, House of Representatives, and Vice Governor of Yamaguchi Prefecture in Japan. She worked as director of Social Welfare Bureau of Ministry of Health and Welfare, and director of Children and Family Bureau of MHW, and also was a planning evaluation officer in the Mid North India Office of UNICEF, 
and Cabinet Counselor for Aging Society Problems in Japan. Welcome, Dr. Oizumi. Thank you for giving me a floor. I feel very honored and humbled to speak at this web seminar. My name is Hiroko Oizumi, as introduced, former member of the Parliament of Japan. My capacity has been in the field of social policies, but uh, I have been exposed to international activities like UNICEF and to the government to government negotiation. From that experience and as a Japanese closest to Korean, I will try my best to express the general opinion of Japanese towards the topic. Today's topic, DMZ, this is very difficult for me. I thought DMZ is basically a tentative place that would be destined to disappear in the case of reunification of two countries. I understand there are proposals to make use of DMZ as a world heritage and to invite United Nations agencies on the zone in the future. Today, I heard Dr. Wu's proposal too. I must confess, I was confused to hear the proposals. Reunification is the first to talk about and without reunification, utilization of DMZ would be beyond the reality. If not reunification, eternal two countries should be recognized by peace treaty. And in that case, which country take DMZ? Here, I will talk about mainly the peace of Korean Peninsula and I will add DMZ a little bit. Utilization of DMZ is domestic issue and realization of peace in Korean Peninsula should be shared by the stakeholders, including Japan. I may be mistaken, but please understand this is the limit that foreigners can comment on DMZ. I have four points. Number one is what Korean War means to Japan. Number two is how Japan think of reunification of North and South. Number three is the example of German reunification. Lastly, number four is what Japan expects Korea to do at present and a little bit of the topic of utilization of DMZ. Starting from what Korean War means to Japan. This year, 2021 is the 71st anniversary of the Korean War and I am 71 years old, born in Excuse me, doctor, I think you've unmuted your microphone. Can you unmute your microphone, please? Have you heard? Thank you. Over. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I, again, uh, start from the topic one. 2021, this year is the 71st anniversary of the Korean War and I am 71 years old, born in 1950. It is just a coincidence. It is coincidence for me, but 1950 means a lot to Japan. This is the year that Japan started to recover from Wall Street economy. I was lucky baby to be fed well. Why is that? Japan recovered from war stricken economy because the Korean War military demands should be met by Japanese production. The United States, actually it was General Headquarter, GHQ located in Tokyo, made Japan produce the supplies needed for the war because Japan is close enough to Korean Peninsula. It was said that Japan was benefited at the sacrifice of neighbor country. Our generation were taught at school that Japan recovered from war economy owing to Korean War, owing to Korean War demands, and that 
Self-Defense Force was established due to Korean War, despite the controversial discussion of the Constitution enacted in 1947 that prohibits having army. Also, because of the Korean War, occupation period was prolonged up to 1952, and Japan was reborn as a member of democratic countries and as the breakwater against communism in East Asia. However, most of Japanese did not know what had happened to Korea because the fact information was controlled by general headquarters. It was 1966, 13 years after the ceasefire in Korean Peninsula, when Professor Kamiya, Keiwa University, was allowed to read secret documents of general headquarters and published the book, Korean War. He clearly wrote, North started the war with the permission of Soviet Union. Can you believe? Till this book was published, the mainstream of academism and mass media had believed or had pretended to believe President E. Suman colluded with D Douglas MacArthur to start the war. Probably democratic oriented Japanese wanted to think South should be stronger than North or else general headquarters implied this false story. Like this episode, Many facts were revealed after a long time had elapsed. And I guess there are still facts covered up. Topic number two, how Japan think of reunification of the North and South. In fact, not only Korean War itself, but also after ceasefire situation have been influential on Japan in many ways. Japan recognizes mm -hmm. We live close to the explosive storage in neighbor country. At the same time, most of Japanese take it for granted that the Cold War caused the problem and that United States and the Soviet Union were responsible for that, not Japan. As far as reunification of North and South is concerned, the general opinion had been that it is solely Korean people's mother. But Japanese attitude had to change when abduction problem caused by North was closed up under Pri Prime Minister Koizumi's administration in early 21st century. That is, reunification is not our problem, but we have to contribute to ease intention and realization of peaceful life in Korean Peninsula. Japan participated in six party talks. Since then, maybe I don't have to explain anymore. The six party talks stopped and Korean Peninsula situation has gone back and forth with unseen goal. Topic number three, example of a German reunification. Germany successfully realized reunification of East and West in 1990. The main cause of success was due to Soviet collapse. Like this, there should be unprecedented huge power to change the situation drastically. Icebreaker is not Japan. President Trump realized top talks with North. Even so, no success was obtained for peace without nuclear missiles. President Biden wouldn't take the same way and then who will be the fixer for peace among the state stakeholders? China, Russia? North Korea has historically taken an original route away from China and Russia, as Dr. Lee today explained. In recent years, President Kim Jong-un paid a few visits to China and once to Russia. Does it mean that China may have the key to solution? I don't know, nobody knows. Though we see the miracle of Germany, they have suffered a lot to reunite two economies and experienced a long recession. I stood in Berlin in 1989. 
to see the people in the West laugh at the Eastern people driving the poorest car, Trabant. The social index of the East and the West has narrowed the gap, but still they are struggling. Is South ready for that? This is an important point. Reunification and utilization of DMZ may be important. However, aftermath should be much more important. Time is not ripe yet. By the way, the place where Berlin Wall existed is now a sightseeing spot. That might be a good example of the utilization of DMZ. I heard four pieces of Berlin Wall are sold there. I have a real one obtained in 1989. The last point, what does Japan expect Korea to do now? South Korea achieved a miracle on the Han River and V-shaped recovery from Asian e economic crisis. She is a powerful country. If she would be successful in reunification, she would become population of 75 million country and exceed most of developed European countries in economy. Even though there are lots of difficult in issues between Korea and Japan, like comfort women and wartime labor, Japanese wish to contribute to Korean peace and success, no doubt. But we all think time is not ripe yet. Though present moon looks in haste. For the time being, observing the US China relations, that is geopolitics, I hope the current DMZ should be kept till the global movement would arise. Hopefully, Korea would join the Quad, sort of loose coalition of the United States, India. Australia and Japan to express Korea is a democratic country. At least four powerful countries would be helpful for unknown future. Korea and the other stakeholders have a long way to go. The chance would come tomorrow or a decade later or even three decades later. If you would not realize reunification, peaceful use of DMZ would sound a dream in the dream. I will pray for a dream in the dream to be realized. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your valuable words. Thank you very much, Dr. Yusumi. Um, thank you, ladies and gentlemen for your inspiring messages and important contributions in building peace and harmony in and for Korean Peninsula. Moving on to the Q&A session. We got many questions. Thank you to the participants for sending your questions. We would like to pick several questions for panelists. So uh, here there is one for Dr. Wu. It says, you mentioned that you signed an MOU document with the Kim Il-sung University of North Korea and Yanbian University of China to implement the international co-research project. What kind of project would it be? Dr. Wu, please. Ah, yeah, 우선 죄송합니다. 그, 어, 이 슬라이드가 테크니컬 프로그램 때문에 잘안 돌아가서 죄송합니다. <웃음> 그리고 지난 2015년 어, 너의 그 제가 북한을 직접 갈수 없었기 때문에 어, 중국 연변에 있는 연변대학의 어, 같은 분야 교수님하고 어, 같이 이제 프로젝트를 상의하다가 
어, 그분이 이제 북한 프로젝트가 있었기 때문에 북한 프로젝트를 같이 하자. 그래서 이제 그때 2015년 5월경에 어, 이 김일성 종합대학하고 연결이 돼서 김일성 종합대학하고 연변대학하고 강원대학하고 북한의 산림 황폐지를 복구하는 그런 프로젝트를 같이 진행하자는 제안이 있어서 어, 3개 대학이 이제 공동으로 추진을 하게 됐고 그 이제 어, 잠깐 말씀드리면은 우리나라가 산림 그 녹화가 성공한 것은 아까도 잠깐 말씀드렸지만 어, 독일 정부에서 어, 20년을 도왔습니다. 그래서 그때 그 돕는 방법이 여러 가지가 있었는데 어, 제일 중요한 것이 모델 지역을 선정하는 것이었습니다. 그래서 김일성 종합대학의 모델 지역을 지역을 선정해서 10년 동안의 프로젝트를 진행하자. 그래서 그거를 어, 북한의 김일성 종합대학이 에, 수긍을 해서 그 황해남도 지역의 모델 지역을 선정을 해서 추진을 했었습니다. 그런데 그게 이제 2016년도에 어, 개성공단이 폐지, 폐지가 되면서 중지가 됐습니다. 그래서 지금까지 중지된 상태로 시작은 했는데 어, 결실을 보지 못한 프로젝트가 되겠습니다. 감사합니다. Thank you very much, Dr. Wu. It would have been marvelous if this project could have come to reality. Thank you. Okay, now I have a question for Dr. Lee. Yeah, they, oh, sorry. Okay, Dr. Lee, they said that they would secure, oh, sorry, that they would secure the North Korean regime, lift the economy, economic blockade, and remove the pressure North Korea would agree to loosen the boundary and peaceful use of DMZ. But looking at the current political situation in the world, which, which can be the most first step in securing the North Korean regime and lifting the economic blockade? Yes, <laughs> as I presented in, the, in my talk, I think North Koreans developed nuclear weapons to deter actually US military threat. Although we think the United States did not pose any threat to North Korea, but to North Koreans, US military presence in the DMZ and South Korea is a real threat to North Korea. So that's why they developed nuclear weapons. So I think it should be the United States that take first step to develop diplomatic ties with North Korea just as it did with Vietnam and Cuba. There's a many complicated, you know, small steps needed to, but U.S. should be take the agenda. I think U.S. should take the step first. Otherwise, North Koreans would not move in. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Lee. And we've got a question for Dr. Wu. What is the role of China, Japan, Russia and USA, what are the necessary steps toward peace in the East Asian region? Well, uh, yeah, uh, Dr. Wu, please. <laughs> okay. uh, Sorry if I'm... Uh, <laughs> okay, go ahead, please. Okay. 好，那个基本上呢，呃，现在金门的角，因为这个问题有点大，那金门刚才那个发表，就是各发表人在讲的时候，呃，有人提出就是呃，在呃没有统一的状况之下，就我们最后一个发表者他讲说，在没有统一的
，然后我们共同的经营开发跟交流，先交流才有办法到今天的地步。那现在因为呃，以前金门是在冷战时期是重要的一个角色，就是在中国跟台湾的战争之中，它是一个重要的角色。但是因为现在面临新冷战的问题。其实金门也面临了一个新的问题，就是金门现在因为中国的武器，它的那个国力已经越来越强，所以呃，对于我们来讲，呃，对于中国来讲，金门已经没有所谓的战略的价值。他如果要攻击台湾，如果要用武力统一台湾的话，他可以直接攻击台湾的。好，但是呢。呃，所以金门现在在新冷战的问题之下，金门扮演什么角色，是我们金门人现在要思考的问题。那至于呃，在两岸的问题之下，其实可能比较单纯一点点，就是原则上从冷战开始就是美国跟中国的战争，所以不会不太会牵扯到俄国。就是不会到很上面这样，就不会到东北亚的那个阶层。但是因为最近日本，日本因为为了要呃抗，就是抵抗，就是有点就是反中的情绪比较比较呃比较强烈一点点，所以日本它最近都对台湾非常的友善。所以这样的情况之下，呃，在新冷战的情况之下，呃，原则上我们台湾目前呃开始积极的拉拢。呃，日本跟韩国的支持，那背后当然就是中国跟美国的战争。那我们台湾要怎么去应对，是我们现在面临的问题。谢谢。Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Wu.、Uh, due to the time limitation, I would like to ask the last question, and this is for、uh, for Madame Oisumi. Says, what can NGOs Contribute for a peaceful reunification. What can women do, in your opinion? Thank you for your question. Um, maybe WFWP is one of them. Um, of course, it's not、uh, really political, um, but、uh, it goes for I mean peace. So, and.、Uh, Also,、um, NGO shouldn't be political. So、um, they've got to work for the things surrounding the political、um, themes. I think. So maybe that's not the answer. And the, as a role of women, I think I don't think there's a. Especially a role of women, people's roles, to change the situation. But one thing is definite: women has to have to protect children. So, in any case, in wartime, in peaceful time, women's first thing to do is to protect the children. From that point of view. We have to make policies and push the government to do that. That's all. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. I would like to close the Q and A session. Apologies if we didn't get to your question. You can always email us after the webinar. Thank you very much, distinguished panelists and participants. This concludes the WFWP webinar. On DNZ as future peace zone in Korean Peninsula. Thank you very much. <laughs>